so how many of you know this guy? Just the way I like it. People from the prison know who I am, baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is David Brown, the founder of the Harmony Project. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I sat in that chair where the woman with the red sweater is mm -hmm. when I came to your very first concert here. So it's nice to be back with you on stage. You so I've invited David for this one minute chat. And this is the last part, so stick with us. We know we're running a little late, but lunch is not going anywhere. Uh, and it's really important because our two special guests are still yet to take the stage. Uh, so the Harmony Project in 15 six seconds. Six words. How about six in words. six words? There you go. Uh, that's for you, Larry. Um, <laughs> every voice matters all together now. That's pretty much what it is. Awesome. And if you want to learn more, you can go to their website. But what we're here to really talk about is a few weeks ago, um, I got to visit one of your Harmony Project projects because now you have many franchises of the Harmony Project. And I went to visit the Inside Out Choir uh, at the Ohio Formatory for Women. So just tell us a little about how that started and how long you've been there and what they need to know because they're going to see it in a minute. Sure. So first, I want to give a shout out to our sisters, uh, our soul sisters back at ORW watching this on the live feed right now. We wish we were there with you today. <clears throat> um, but your sisters have represented you beautifully here today. So um, a couple of years ago, I met uh, the warden at um, Ohio Reformatory for Women, Warden Burks, and uh, Kathy Kobacker, uh, a friend of Columbus and a friend of yours yes. and a friend of TEDx, and uh, Karen Jones. And we all started talking about different ideas. Imagine that, that Karen Jones was not part of it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we love you, right. <laughs> and, um, and we all started talking about this idea of you know, finding new ways for more people to express their voice. But in Harmony Project, uh, the Harmony is not just about music, it's also about service. So you can imagine in, in the confines of a prison, it's difficult to express community service. How do you go beyond the walls to serve your community while you're there? And um, as we began working in the prison, um, Kathy's work in South Africa opened up the door for us to develop a Skype relationship. And so once a month, we Skype with children in the Sunflower um, AIDS Hospice in Bloemfontein, South Africa. And the women sing to the children. <clears throat> they knit finger puppets and blankets and socks and make flowers for them out of what we're limited to use at the prison, which is like construction paper and crayons. <laughs> um, ridiculous, right? Yeah. Um, but I'm not here to change prison culture. No, so, no, no. Um, we're back, back, to anyway. the, back to the choir. Back to the choir. ADD, ADD. Okay, yeah. I'm back. So, um, <laughs> anyway, so the, the this women. This is my have, fault that yeah, I brought it's her fault. Right? It's I, 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 I warned I, her. I own this. <laughs> so, um, the women have developed this virtual relationship and bond with these children. And at Sunflower House in South Africa, every time a child passes away, a sunflower is painted on the wall and the picture of the child goes in it. But at ORW, there is a sunflower wall. And the women have taken pictures of the children through the Skype and in other ways and from what Kathy brought back from her travels. And there are pictures of the children all over from Sunflower House inside the prison. And the women and their director, um, uh, Annette Dominguez, um, know these children now and they have relationships with them through this television screen. And it's amazing that on this side of the world in Marysville, Ohio, we're making tones, which is what music is. And at the exact same moment on the other side of the world, there are children making tones with their body. And those two tones align. And in that alignment, there is amazing healing, there is transformation, and there is just absolute empathy and love. And that's what the program is really all about. So how about, yes, please. Uh, so how about we hear the choir? I would love for you to, to and I, I want to say one thing. The one question that I'm asked almost all the time yes. is, so what did they do? And it's always like a, what did they do? <laughs> you know? And here's the deal. Um, I'm not going to ask you what you've done. Because you don't want to be asked. As long as you don't ask me what I've done. Um, because where we were, just as Larry just talked about, uh, yesterday is not where we are today. And uh, what you're going to hear from the women is you're going to hear one of the proclamations that we say almost every week, that where I am does not define who I am. So, inside out.
can stand on this stage and I can spend a long time telling you about what we do at ORW. There's a couple things I just want to share with, leave you with, or there's one thing I want to leave you with. I say to my staff daily, and they know what I'm about to say, that we are in the business of saving lives. That's what we do. Our work, our mission, it is that serious. And I can stand up here all day and share with you about what we do, but what's more important, I think, is for you to hear it firsthand from someone who actually resides in the tapestry unit and is a member of the Inside Out Choir. So remember this, freedom is a state of mind, not a tangible condition. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you Gabrielle Lynn Crosby. like to take a moment and thank Warden Burks for giving me this wonderful opportunity to be here today. Okay, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. That was the song that pulled me from the darkness into the light. I never could have imagined that I would be Skyping with children in South Africa, especially while I was in prison. And I had no idea the impact that they would have on my life. As I stood there for the first time and listened to the small, sweet voices singing, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, I knew I was in the right place. July 13, 2012, I arrived at Ohio Reformatory for Women, seven months pregnant, getting ready to face my toughest challenge in life, having a child in prison. The first moments I held Angelica in my arms were bittersweet. I had waited so long to meet her, but I knew bringing her into this world would mean I would have to leave her. The two days in the hospital flew by in the blink of an eye, and before I knew it, I was sending my daughter home, and I was returning to prison, broken and alone. The two years following her birth were some of my most darkest and trying times. It would be my son Samuel and daughter Nadia singing me Twinkle Twinkle Little Star over the phone that would get me through. Tears began to stream down my face as I listened to the Sunflower House kids sing. I didn't know it at the time, but that was the moment where my life began to change and healing began. The woman that stands before you today is completely different than the person who entered prison three years ago. Today, I am able to experience the benefits of giving back, and 
I'm also astonished at the impact that I can have on the world with having, limiting, with having limited access to it. God has placed tapestry in the Inside Out Choir in my life at just the right time. I use music as an outlet, as I have my whole life. I believe musical is very powerful and very healing. So every week when we get together with the choir and sing, and I'm surrounded by people who truly care, it's in those moments where I'm free. I'm free from the judgments, the preconceived notions, and labels society wants to place on me. I'm seen as a human being who gets a second chance, a chance to give back and make a positive impression on our world. I wake up in prison every morning with bars on the windows and razor wire fence as far as the eye can see, but I am liberated. I've found something I've been missing for a very long time, my voice. The mistakes I've made in my past have helped mold me to become the person that I am today, but I do not have to be defined by them. I may be serving a sentence, but I'm also serving a purpose. And that's my story, and I own it. I don't know if you heard her last words because you started clapping, but we say them again. That's my story, and I own it. Yeah.